So based on the film, what are the defensive priorities this week, would you say? Uh, finish tackles on the perimeter and keep the quarterback in the pocket. Um, when we did that, we played high, high level defense. Uh, when we didn't do that, uh, like most defenses, you're, you're going to get exposed. And so the uh, pressure has been great. Now we're look at the national rankings, we're the number one team right now, pressuring quarterbacks, which is a huge thing. It's a phenomenal place to be. Uh, but there's a few times where we were uh, just undisciplined and, and you can't let guys get outside the pocket, especially the quality quarterback we're going to play this week, quality quarterbacks we're going to see the rest of the way where we, we can do a better job on that and still and still get the pressure and the hits and the sacks uh, that have been a big part of us being five and over. So um, we got to do that and then we've got to we got to finish tackles on the perimeter. I mean that's that's the name of the game a lot of times now in college football most teams you play are pretty spread. There is going to be space out there uh, and we've obviously got to do a better job tackling uh, and limit some of those plays like we did in the first half the other day. Right. Yeah, yeah, both both progressing, both uh, both did a lot more today uh, than what they did last week. Um, so, yeah, hopeful with, uh, to be able to have them both. It was, uh, you know, obviously those are those are two prominent players for us, and uh, not not having Max, especially in a game like that where you end up playing a, a lot of snaps against uh, you know against a spread high tempo offense. Um, that was that. That one hurt, right? Just his experience, um, and and just simply too, just from a from a sub standpoint. I mean, we had too many guys that played, you know, 90 plus snaps. We start to consider special teams as well. So, hope to have them both back. Don't think they're going to long term, uh, but we got to see how they progress. Like, and you talked about how the trained eye could see the differences between maybe some issues in the defense this year versus last year. Could you expand on that a little bit? Like, what what is clear that? You know, the, where there are different issues this year, maybe compared to last year. Well, I mean, you're talking about comparing, obviously, a big part of games. But I, I think, I mean, first off, we've been able to generate consistent pass rush uh, from all levels of the defense. Um, I think our, I think we're better from a blitzing standpoint, from a linebacker position, and we certainly have more guys up front, both outside and on the interior. Uh, that can create havoc, that can get in the backfield, that can create tackles for loss. Um, and so that's been a big difference. Uh, I think the second has been the the run lanes. Um, we're, we're a little bigger, thicker, stronger inside. And so um, when, when things have popped this year, when we've given up a run, it's just, it doesn't look the same. It just, it just doesn't. And uh, it's, it's not been because people are just getting moved way off the ball or you maybe have just kind of this gaping hole here. It's been, uh, again, it's, it's, a, it's just a sturdier front overall. And I think, I think those have been the biggest differences, honestly. I, I think we've busted less. Um, we've played some stretches of ball. Uh, this year that uh, frankly I don't know that we were capable of playing last year to be honest so we got to put it together we can't just do it we can't just dominate a good offense for two and a half quarters like we did the other day we got to do it for four that's our expectation that we will coach with Eric Gentry only playing nine snaps on defense are you managing him from a health perspective is it more you want to see more from him in practice just taking through uh, his, his role right now yeah uh, I think I think just competition you know I mean he's uh, you know Eric still He's, he's, he's back full go, but when, when you miss the time that Eric missed, I mean, he missed all the spring ball. He missed, you know, basically the last half of last season, and then he was very limited really through all the fall camp. I mean, he's still, he's healthy, but he's still getting his feet underneath him. He's still getting back used to being on the field and playing a lot of snaps. So, and, and listen, we got a better linebacker than we did last year. I mean, it just, it is what it is. There's more good players. Uh, I think Eric's going to have a chance to have a prominent role in our team and our defense, and I was proud of him the other day that even in a game where he didn't play a million defensive snaps. The pump walk was clearly one of the biggest plays in that game, and so uh, still making an impact. But yeah, I, the quality of players he is, if he continues to work hard and, and stay focused, and it's hard to imagine him not getting better and better and playing a pretty good role for us. Lincoln, we didn't see Corey Portman on the sideline on Saturday. He didn't play against ASU. Is he someone who comes to redshirt? Or? It's something we're exploring right now. You know, it's this early in the season. Um, I don't know. I don't want to say anything for sure because a lot of things can transpire. But you know, you uh, both us as a staff and, and the players that, that have that available, it's something you have to be aware of, and it's something we're open with guys. We have we have conversations with all of our guys that have 
uh, that have redshirt years available. Um, and so occasionally if a guy maybe he's not going to have a huge role in the game, he might hold them back right now. And then if an opportunity presents itself to have a bigger role, you can obviously revisit that down the line. And I would put, uh, I would put Corey in that category right now. Arizona did maybe one of the best jobs this season of limiting Washington's offense last week. What stands out about their defense? Yeah, they're, I think they're improved. Um, they've got, you know, obviously some new personnel, but they, uh, yeah, they, they, they did a nice job. They dropped some people into coverage. Um, they really did a really good job of, of preventing Washington from, from throwing the ball over the head, which that's something you know, Washington's obviously done a good job of this year. They really, they really weren't weren't able to do that. Kind of forced them to be more patient and uh, and made a few plays. And honestly, they were they were probably a couple of third and extra long conversions away from you know from having. And they had a great shot to win it as it is, but even better shot to win it. So they played well. And I mean. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's a good football team that came up there and had a chance to win. And stuff. I've been telling you guys, road football is hard, man. And they played well on the road, give them credit. Young quarterback played well. And, uh, so now this is, uh, I think this is an improved football team. I it's a better football team than we've played in two It seems like a huge of loss is really kind of key to the starting spot. I mean, you know, what, what is it done to kind of earn that also? Yeah, Kristen's, uh, he's been our most consistent guy. And not, not totally surprised with that. It, his experience shows up. The fact that he's been through it, you, there's just a maturity and a confidence about him and a steadiness that's been really good for that room. Um, and, and so we obviously, you know, didn't have him kind of didn't have him through most of spring. Again, we had the weird deal with the first of the season. I mean, all of that. So he's starting to really get get in a rhythm. And uh, I think he's done a nice job at Point. Played very steady, played a lot of snaps for us the other day. Uh, Covington's coming along. Uh, he's made some nice plays. He honestly, you know, even the on the uh, on the hard count the other day, he was in pretty good position. The ball kind of tracked back inside. He's, he's really in pretty good position on that play. And he's he's starting to become a little more consistent on the drive of the field. So he's a guy. Um, you know, he's a guy we'll point to. You know, along with Damani, along with Sierra. That, uh, you know, we want those guys to continue to come along. We know what we're going to need them. They've all had some moments of really, really good play. Um, they're all in a really big competition right now to play, and, and the, the things are rising top. And, and we need those guys to come out and play at our level. See you, Lamar. Got three former Arizona players. Uh, you mentioned Christian Ronald Loss. Is there? Any, you guys kind of talk to them about game plan or strategy or anything? Or is, that, is that okay to do? Or? <laughs> Kind of just it's more fun in it, just to kind of settle them down. And they're all, they're honestly they're three pretty steady guys, they're pretty older guys. But we've had this a lot now with like Austin last year before Stanford and B Rice last week for Colorado. I mean, it's become a little more commonplace that somebody on your roster is going to be you know, have played the, the at the school that you're playing that week. So uh, yeah, I'm trying not to make it too big for them. You know, I have those guys are always excited to go go back and, and compete against all the buddies and see a lot of people. And then there's obviously a lot of emotions flowing there. So. Uh, I'm glad those guys are with us. Uh, I know they'll be ready to play. So I'll be like, oh, is there any?